Jesus has this conversation with a woman at the well. He purposely went to this woman. And if you notice in this conversation, and think about this. When God came down to us, he came to give us something. Think about that. He didn't come to demand something from us. He came to offer us something. He said to this woman, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the drink that I'm going to give you, if you understood who I am and what I'm going to offer you, you would be crying out to me for this gift. Notice what he says in verse 10. He says, Jesus answered, send her if you knew the gift of God. And who it is that says to you, give me a drink, and you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The good news of the gospel, we, we talk about the good news. The good news of the gospel is not that God demands something from us. It's not that God is asking us to do more things. The gospel, the good news of the gospel is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he's given us and offering us a gift. That's what Jesus is offering us. The son of God, God in the flesh is offering this gift. And so he, he comes to this woman and he offer us, offer, offers her this gift. And I'm going to ask a question here as we get into the context of what's really happening here. The question is, is the living water for everyone? Because the Jews would say no. The Jews would say it's exclusive. The Jews would say, salvation is of the Jews, it's only for us. Why, Jesus, are you going to this outcast woman, an enemy of the Jewish people, why are you offering it to her? It's for us. And so, today, in our social media, in our news flashes, whenever there's a incident, a hot button topic today is race and racial tension and racial problems in our country and all around us. And, and by the way, this is not an American problem. It's a human problem. We'll get into that. And so we come to this water and we ask the question, is this water for everyone? And as we come to, we think of this hot but an issue today, we want a biblical response and an emotional response. There are a lot of emotional responses to this is issue. But what I really want to see is a biblical response, a solution. Because emotional responses and finger pointing and nail ca uh, calling doesn't resolve the problem. Ignoring the problem doesn't resolve the problem. Talking about it and finding some biblical answers can resolve the problem. But Jesus is going to show us with his actions that all lives matter. He's not just going to say it. He's going to show it with what he actually did. And in the context of where he did it, he's going to show, and he's showing the disciples because the disciples were confused. He's showing the Jews, and he's showing us, and he's showing the world that all lives matter in the sight of God. Now, I'm not a, probably an expert to talk about this issue and definitely not one who has experienced personally racism. Uh, but I've worked with people that have, uh, that I've seen with my eyes some of the prejudices and the racism and the stereotypes. 
when I first went to Romania, we were excited about starting a church, and we had rented a place downtown, and we started having all these people come, and kids come, and we're excited. We're new missionaries on the field, and we're excited about all the kids coming, and all the people coming. And we had some people from another church come to us and kind of uh, talking down to us like, do you realize that those are gypsies? In a tone of like, you're not really like, you're not not really reaching people. You're just reaching gypsies. Like, their lives don't matter. And I have had people say to me that gypsies can't be saved. You see, racism isn't an American thing. It's a human thing. It's human nature. And we've even seen race... (laughs) Tension between, uh, I probably told this story recently, but we were doing an evangelistic outreach, and as the kids were coming in, the owner of the building was saying, oh, this one can come, that one can't come. I'm like, what's the deal? He said, well, that's a different tribe of gypsies, and they're no good. And so there is, as we think of this question this morning, and we think of this idea of, People, of groups, of divisions. We have to ask this question. Do all lives have equal value in the sight of God? And as we come to this passage, we see that the Bible says this... He must needs go through Samaria. He must needs go through Samaria. Now Samaria was a distinct group that the Jews did not agree with. They did not go. In fact, going through Samaria was a shortcut and the Jews would purposely go around. They would take the long way around so they didn't have to meet a Samarian that day. And so what is, what is racism? Racism is prejudice, discrimination, antagonism directed against someone of a different race or ethnicity. We could probably use eth- ethnicity more on the belief that one's own race or ethnicity or group is superior. And we do that on large and small scales. Right? We do that based on what side of town people come from. Or what town they come from. Or what state they come from. I admit, somebody comes from the south, I'm a little skeptical. (laughs) Being a northerner. And uh, and notice what it says in verse 9. So she was surprised. The woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, Jesus, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman, Not only was she a Samaritan, she was a woman. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. She's saying, Jesus, you're on the wrong side of town. How did you get here? Your GPS must have got lost. Why are you here, Jesus? You're, You're not in the right side of town. And notice the separation. Notice the distinction. Notice the differences, the hostilities between the Jews and the Samaritans went back centuries. Uh, I put it in the bulletin, you can read a little bit more about it. But all of the events that that are described and the fact is led to 
intense hostility between the Samaritans and the Jews by Jesus' day. So to get the context of this passage, there was, it was a hotbed of racial tension. There was hatred. There were bad feelings. And so these, the groups of the Jews, religious Jews, Samaritans, they were in racial tension. And Jesus, by his actions. Now, this is really the key about what Jesus did. Jesus, by his actions, not just his words, teaches us that all lives matter. Teaches us that not one race is superior to another race. Teaches us that the gospel, the living water, is for everybody. It's not exclusive to one particular person or race. There was actions. That's a key thought today about racism. Listen, this is not, this is a human problem. It's our human heart. It's a heart problem because we're sinners and we like to feel superior. It's also a spiritual problem because Satan wants to divide us. He wants to divide and conquer. He wants to create hate between people. And he will use rumors, accusations, To influence us to riot, to hate, to kill. Sometimes in the name of religion. But Jesus said, I have to go to Samaria. I have an appointment with a woman there. There's a woman there at the well who I need to talk to about this water. I have some water of life for her. I have something for her that she needs. And I'm going to Samaria and I don't care what the Jews say. I don't care what my disciples say. I don't care what anybody says. I am going to Samaria. I can remember having Placid at our table in Romania. He was a medical student. He's still in Romania. He's from Rwanda. Telling us about the genocide in Rwanda. How many family members of his were killed? You realize in Rwanda, uh, there's a movie, Hotel Rwanda, about a man that saved thousands. But there was this racial tension for years between the Tutsis and the Hutsis. And in a hundred day period, 800,000 to a million people were killed. Can you imagine? Satan got the victory that day. But can you imagine that many people being killed? So where does hatred, where does anger, where does it get us? It doesn't get us anywhere. In Rwanda, it was devastating. And we could go throughout history and look at the wars and their wars have root in racial tension. It is a spiritual problem. Satan wants to divide us, kill us, destroy us. And there's no greater joy than he can do than to have us fighting against each other. Because somebody's skin color is different. Because somebody's traditions are different. Because somebody's height is different. They have those uh, DNA tests. And I read about one white supremacist. They did a DNA test. (laughs) And they found out like 45% was from Africa. 
We're all the same. We all come from Adam and Eve. Nobody's better. We're all saved by the living water, Jesus. There's nobody more saved or less saved or more superior than others. We're all here by the grace of God. So it's a human problem, it's a spiritual problem, but it's also a religious problem. Racism is a religious problem. The Jews were very religious, weren't they? They had the law of God. They were the strictest keeping the law of God, yet they were very racist. They were Jesus. They did not like Jesus because he he totally tore up their all their habits and all their uh, prejudices. He destroyed them. So they killed him. Because he really upset their heart. And a lot of times, even our country, I'm not from the South, but segregated churches and churches promoting slavery. So this is this is a religious problem. That's why as a church we need to talk about it. Because it is a problem and it is something that's going on in our country. And oftentimes we get comfortable with our own, don't we? We get comfortable in our... I've noticed this sometimes in the churches. It's okay to reach certain people groups if you're a missionary and you're over there. But when they're here, do we reach them? I can remember being in a church one time. Doing my missionary presentation. I was talking to a guy afterwards. And he was complaining. He's in one of the New England states. He's complaining about all the Somalis that were in his town. And how they take welfare benefits and all this. And going on and on. And I'm like, brother. And he, right before he's talking to me about going to Bible college and being, being a missionary. I said to him, brother. The mission field's here. Get busy. Go learn their language. Go sit down with dinner for them, with them. I can remember Johnny. I've told you about Johnny and Elena when they first came to church. Before I had come to Romania, one of the churches in town had shown the Jesus film. And he got a flyer on the street and he was a few, he was a couple streets away from the church and he met somebody and said, hey, where's the Jesus film? I want to see him. And you can see Johnny really looks like a gypsy. He's not just, says he's a gypsy. You know what the person told him? There's no church here. In other words, the Jesus film is for just certain people, not the gypsies. And I've seen time and time again how the gypsies are treated just because of the color of their skin. And that creates other difficult problems. But as you can see, Elena, that's Elena today and Johnny, they're doing just fine and teaching their kids in the fear of the Lord. See, God, God wants to give the living water to everybody. God doesn't say, look, no, no, your, your skin's a little dark. I, I'm not going to give you the gospel. Or I'm not going to love you. Or I'm not going to seek you. The gospel's for everybody. The gospel's for all people. And so... Jesus didn't say to the Samaritan, you must be saved. Jesus said, I have to go to Samaria because all lives matter. Every life is precious. Every life is, has value to me. So all lives matter. Now, listen, we're not going to change 
society and you can't pass a law to change human nature. And probably most of us would not consider ourselves racist but if we really look deep in our heart are there times when we look down on others because of fill in the blank are there times when we think we're superior because we have an education because we have a certain job we have a house it's in our heart so three conclusions this morning about this first of all it's not about being a racist it's about being a sinner we are sinners we are in our heart of hearts we're sinners and we do sinful things and we make sinful judgments we all do we all see it and there have been times there were times and I mourn because of those times where I let my heart be influenced by certain people to look at the gypsies with prejudice Because my heart is sinful. And so it's not so much a racist, racism problem. It's a sin problem we have. And the problem today is we're not looking to God for the answer. We're looking to protest, to laws, to whatever. The only one that can change it is God. The only person that can change another person is God. He's the one that can change the heart. He's the one that can take a white supremacist and make him born again and love all people. He's the one that can take a bad cop who fabricates an arrest, puts a black person in jail for four years, finally gets caught when the person gets out of jail seeks revenge, they meet at a Christian ministry and now our friends going around speaking of forgiveness. Only God does that. God's the one that can do that. God's the one that can give forgiveness and bring people back together. It's not about racism. It's about being a sinner. And then it's not about your ethnic value. It's about your God-given value. You have value because you're created in the image of God. You have value because God created you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows even the hairs of your head. They're all numbered. Everything about you, God created you special. You are in His image. We must honor people that are created in the image of God. Where do we get this? If people look different, somehow we're better than them. Where do we get that? It's from Satan. We're all created in God's image. We all come out from Adam and Eve. And so it's, it's not about your ethnic value. Although part of that, by the way, Part of your ethnic value is part of your God-given value. Because God created the languages and He created the ethnic groups. He created the skin colors. He created the differences to show us His glory and His power and His wisdom. So instead of hate in the differences. We should embrace the differences. We should glory in the differences. Learn about our differences. 
So it's not about ethnic value. It's about God-given value. You have a value in God. And then the third point, it's not about tolerance, it's about loving. Like, tolerance is not a good word. Like, my wife's trying to get me to take vitamins. And they're big. I feel like a horse. I tolerate taking those vitamins. Nothing I love about them. We tolerate things. It doesn't mean we tolerate, right? We tolerate the cold. I said to somebody the other day, oh, I love the cold. What was I? I think I was losing my mind. No, you're good. I'm good. So we, we tolerate things. We get accustomed to things. It's not love. Right? That's not love. God's told us to love. Jesus said it. He said, love your enemy. He said, you do good to those that, you know, come over my house for dinner. We'll have steak because you know you're coming over my house. We're going to have lobster. Right? But Jesus said, go find somebody that's not going to pay you back anything. It's going to cost you something. Might even steal something from your house and give, bring them over for dinner. That's love. That's true love. I've always said, you're not a good missionary unless you have stuff stolen from your house. <laughs> when you go back and look at the picture, say, oh yeah, I remember that. And I saw the kids in the palace with it. But you know what? What does it matter? Just things. It's about love. He said, love your neighbor, love your brother. We should love everything God puts value on. God puts value on people. So Jesus put value on this woman of Samaria. He said, I have to go through Samaria. I have to go there because it's this woman that needs living water. And that's the gospel. That's evangelism. That's the love of God. That's why Jesus came. Because he values you. And he values me. And so it's not about racism. It's about love. And that we should demonstrate the love of God to everybody and we should try even harder to love those that have grown up in this world without love. That have grown up in this world with people calling them names because of their ethnicity. With people not letting them into their group because of their skin color. Or their poverty level. Or their clothes. Or their intelligence. Or their personality. We should say, show these people, wait a minute. There's a God that loves you. There's a God that cares for you. There's a God that you can find hope in. But Jesus demonstrated it. Through his actions. All lives matter because God has put a value on our lives. Jesus must needs go through Samaria this morning for you. He went through Samaria for you. He died for you. He waits for you. Jesus died for you. This morning we have some people that are coming up for baptism because they've put their trust in Jesus Christ. They said, Jesus loves me. He died for me. I'm going to accept him as my Savior. This morning, 
Jesus is offering us the water of life. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose again the third day. The Bible says he that has the Son has life. He's offering a gift. He's not requiring you to give a certain amount of money. He's not requiring you to do these certain amount of works. The Bible says whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The question I have for you is have you received this gift? Do you know Jesus is your Savior? The other question I have for all of us do we show Jesus' actions in loving all people? Especially the outcast. Do we go out of our way to show the love of God? I think of my daughter working as a social worker in the foster system and and we need foster parents. I think of our Awana kids and I, I just think of the ravages of the society, what a society without God is leaving behind. If we could make a difference, just if you could make a difference, just one life, one neighbor, one kid, one life. Show them the love of God. Go out of your way. To say, hey, there's living water. There's a God that loves you. God's calling us to do a work for Him. Let's stand and pray this morning.